Have you been watching math videos? And have you learned anything? If you have, that's good. But if you feel like you're struggling in your mathematical journey, my advice is to stop watching so many math videos. The reason is this. Math is not something that is done passively. It's not, right? It's not something you do passively. You can watch math videos. I mean, they are helpful. I mean, I'm a big fan of math videos. I have so many math videos, it's ridiculous. I love watching videos and I love making videos. But it's not the best way to learn math. So if you are working on math and you have been watching videos and you just can't seem to get ahead, it's time to do something else. So what is that? It's doing math problems. And I picked this book here because this is a book that is ridiculously popular. This is probably the most popular calculus book in the entire world. And it gets a lot of criticism, even from myself. I mean, it's not a perfect book. I used this book when I took Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3. And I used a different book, the one by Larson, to teach Calculus 1, 2, and 3. They're both about the same. They both have their pluses or minuses, and they're not perfect books. But this is what you need to get good at math. You need to do problems from a book like this. Now, it doesn't have to be this one specifically, right? This one just happens to be the fifth edition of Calculus. But look how thick this book is. I mean, look at that. That is a thick book. And it's a new book, too. It smells, well, this one, this, this edition, I don't even know why I got this, but it looks like it's in really good condition. This particular edition is not the one that I used in my courses. I picked this up somewhere else. In any case, getting a book like this, getting one of these thick books that has lots of problems, that is the best way to get good at math. Someone once told me that math is not a spectator sport. And I remember hearing that from a professor, and I remember thinking, I don't like that expression. Something about relating it to sports, I'm, I'm not really that uh, athletic, <laughs> so I don't know, I just, I don't think of it as a sport. Uh, but it's a hobby, and it's also a profession for some people, and it's also really interesting. But the part he was right on is it's not something for spectators. You get good at math by actually doing math problems. And the best place to find math problems is in a book, right? Books have the most resources. You can probably find math problems online and you can find them in videos if you can find playlists with like hundreds of videos. But getting them from a book, I think is for me at least, the best way to do it. So if you've been watching math videos and you just can't figure it out I think this will help you. So next time you wanna watch a math video, instead, do a math problem. And then if you get stuck, go to the videos. Remember, you get good at math by doing math problems. One simple strategy that I used for many years was to do a certain number of problems every day. So for example, maybe every day you do 20 math problems, or maybe set the bar lower. The trick is to pick a number that's reasonable. Also, it will depend heavily on the type of math you're doing, right? If you're doing linear algebra proofs, you're going to find it very difficult to do 20 linear algebra proofs in a day. I mean, it's gonna consume your whole day. If you're taking calculus one or calculus two or calculus three or maybe differential equations, depending on the topics you're studying there, uh, you should be able to do 20 problems a day. So try to find the number that is good for you and stick to it and then just do you know, a certain number of problems every day. Math videos are great. I am a big proponent of math videos. I watch math videos, I make math videos. But remember, in order to get good at math, you actually have to do math. So try to set a goal. Try to do just a few problems a day, and I bet it will help. Good luck, and take care.